Greetings. I wish I could be with you there today to preview my Great Republic's course. Uh, unfortunately, this is the very morning when I am giving my last class session of the Great Republic's course up at Sonoma State. So let me tell you a little bit about this course. We in this country have been familiar, been accustomed to enjoying the benefits of representative government. It, however, we are at a point when this is not something that necessarily can be taken for granted. It's not necessarily a given. And actually, indeed, in human history, representative government is an anomaly. Probably 95% of governments in human history have been autocracies, ruled by a king, a, by an emperor, by a dictator. And however, history does offer examples, these, these rare, precious examples, of republics where they were able to be, be strong governments and keep power distributed for long periods of time. And so in this course we're going to begin with the Roman Republic which lasted for 500 years before it succumbed to an emperor. And then we'll move to La Serenissima, the Venetian, the thousand year Venetian Republic. In our third week, our focus will shift to the Republic of Florence. And this is a republic that gave rise to the Italian Renaissance. And I guess this is something that is a characteristic of republics, is that they foster, in history, they, they foster creative cultural flowerings. And in the fourth week, we'll be looking at the Dutch Republic, and that's a really good example in terms of culturally flowering, because the Dutch Republic gave rise to the Dutch Golden Age with painters like Rembrandt and Vermeer, Frans Hall. And in fact, the Rembrandt's renowned painting of Night Watch is really a tribute to the Dutch Republic. Week five, we're gonna be going to France for the Republic that was inspired by ideas of the Enlightenment and that arose in the aftermath of the French Revolution. And the thing is, for France, because, and, and I think it's partly because France for centuries was the main exemplar of absolute monarchy, that in France they kept reverting to monarchies. So they then would need to have another revolution and set up an another new republic. At this point, I think the French are on their fifth republic. So it doesn't come easy working out this type of representative government. In week six, our focus is going to be on the British experience of representative government, really that began in medieval times with Mag Magna Carta. And then over time, there were developments that, such as in the, in the 1600s with the English Civil War. And, the, and the, then the glorious revolution that really kind of established the power of parliament above that of the monarch, so that, that broad distributed rule. And this British experience was really formative in, the, in America, where in the colonies, each of the colonies had the experience of representative government on that sort of British model. And so that you, after the American Revolution, when the, they're see, seeking to set up a new government, they know they want to do a republic. They want something even more broadly, where power is even more broadly distributed than existed in England. And, the, and so part of, a good part of what we're going to be doing in our seventh week is looking at, at how the, father, the, the founding fathers the, the crafted, worked to craft a constitution that would be a foundation for a, a healthy, strong, and long-lasting republic. Our final session on, in week eight is going to be a recapitulation, kind of looking side by side at these different, like, really kind of experiments in representative government and, and, and seeking to derive from that, draw lessons that we can use to apply to some of the contemporary problems, some of the contemporary challenges that are facing representative government at home at, and abroad. And I hope you can join us for this. We're going to be meeting over in Guzman Hall on Tuesday afternoons.
hope to see you there. Thank you.